What's good guys, Tyler Beck, GK Goal Remy. Whoever's not familiar with the channel, I'm a professional goalkeeper who's played pro in Croatia and Finland, semi-pro in Sweden, and then I've also spent a year training with DC United when I was out of contract. And of course, I have a YouTube channel focusing on goalkeeping. So today, we're gonna be doing a match analysis of Michael Bolvin, AKA Modern Goalkeeping in the TST Million Dollar Tournament. Now, to be fair, I didn't even know of this tournament's existence until it was already over but somehow teams you're able to qualify and then the winner would get a million dollars. I don't know how that was actually distributed either, but there's definitely a lot of money on the line for this tournament. And for those not familiar with Modern Goalkeeping, he's one of the biggest social media goalkeeping influencers on YouTube and TikTok right now. And I've made a couple videos on him on the past critiquing him for lying about signing pro contract, lying about being professional trials, and just a handful of other unethical things that he's done in the past. One of those things is that he's actually never plays in any games, so that's why we're doing this match analysis, because I think this is the first real competitive games he would have played in since around 2017-18, so definitely very interested to see how he does. So Dortmund's first matchup is against the Indiana alumni, and there's actually a fair amount of pro experience on this Indiana squad, so you should expect them to be pretty solid. So I'm just gonna let this goal First goal Mike's concedes play out, and then we're gonna go over exactly what he did wrong in a second. So this goal just really shows a lack of patience and of course experience from Mike right here. Where this guy's cutting back across and going away from the goal, Mike just needs to leave him right here. Let this defender that's so much closer step to him and just stay in your goal, defend your goal. That's your number one job is just defend your goal, defend your line. So right here, Mike steps up, and the second his defender sees Mike stepping up, he knows all of a sudden I have to go back to the goal because no one's gonna be there to protect it. And this is just not the time you wanna step to a ball where a player has this much control under it. It's gonna be really hard to put him under pressure and force him to make a mistake, which is usually what you wanna do when you charge out at somebody. So right here again, see just little fake pass, a little unlucky with the deflection to go for the meg also. But right here, this is what I'm talking about you're not in the position to actually put him under pressure here and by the time you're spreading the player already has enough time to just pick out a pass and you're pretty much eliminating four players from the play right there finish again deflection meg definitely unlucky but mike would have been much better off on this goal if he just stayed on his line let his defenders deal with it and then try to force him to take a shot under pressure and just hope that you got the right positioning and reactions to cover the shot a couple minutes later another bad goal to give up really really bad goal to give up here and mike does a couple things wrong right here right on the shot you can see he's loaded up to his right side he's putting all of his weight on that right foot right here just cheating thinking that he's going to be shooting to his right or to the player's left and he's loading up all that weight and then he realizes too late that oh wait the ball's actually going to my left side and you have to shift your whole body weight over and then just really slow getting the hands down but this is really set off by just cheating to that side and then once you get it back shifting over here the hands just kind of coming down like a tree i mean that's just very very slow with the hands there you gotta be shooting him towards the ground he's almost like aiming for the ball and it just kind of sneaks under him and this habit that mike has on cheating on shots like this was 100 percent picked up from just doing years of focusing on content creating instead of actually improving his goalkeeping abilities once you really start looking for it you just see in so many of his videos of him cheating to a specific side where he knows where the ball is going and obviously just trying to set up a camera top hand save to pose for some views. And even in videos where he tries to make a big point about how he doesn't know where the ball's going, it's still pretty obvious that he is cheating and he does know where the coach is gonna shoot. Again, just trying to make some content. Who the f says I know where the fing balls are going, guys? The goalie coach wanna score too. So here's just a few saves from that video where Mike's trying to say he doesn't know where the ball's going. So right here, recovery back to the line. One, his positioning is horrific right here i mean that near post is so open from where the shot's actually coming from it's coming from an angle and here you can see already loaded up on that right leg already loaded up on that right leg ball has not been hit yet you can't say that you don't know where this ball's going see the striker is coming in the frame right here he just hits it already loaded up of course no hands this one's a little tougher just because you can't see the striker but you can hear the shot in this video so you guys are gonna have to trust me on this one you can go back and check it out yourself maybe i can edit it in but right now Still not hit, still not hit. The ball's hit like right here is when you can hear the striker actually make contact. So of course on this one, 100% he knows where it's going. Gets a save, if that's what you wanna call it, and of course celebrates it. Again, here's just the last one. You already see him loading up to the right, loading up to the right. He 
you can't see his legs, but you know he's planted on that right leg, ready to spring. Ball hasn't been hit. Right when ball's, I mean, this ball's still on the striker's or the coach's foot, and he's already just loaded up going right. And of course, just picks up his little top hand save. Here, Indiana player just cuts across the middle of the field. Really good finish. There's no issues with Mike on this one. This is just a good finish. Doesn't get the best push off, but that's gonna be really tough save. You're not expected to save that. And here comes the fourth goal. And I will say Mike's defenders did him no favors over this tournament. Right here, little clip ball, nice little ball. Open wide, tap in. I mean, again, there's not really much he can do here. I don't think that ball is really in range where you could cut that out. And if you're cheating too much on that, he'll just tuck it on the near post. So I think his positioning is actually okay with that. He might even be a little too far off his near post, but again, if teams are just playing one touch passes in your box in this situation, like you're you're not really expected to get the saves as the keeper. This is more on the defenders. And once again, Mike's defenders letting him down, just really clumsy tackle right here and bad PK to give up. Again, PKs, you're gonna go the right way or you're not. And it's just the way it is. So of course, PKs, I'm not gonna say that he shouldn't be saving this penalty either. And here we have Dortmund's last game of the tournament. I'll go over why there's no film of the second game when they got thumped 8-0, but right now we're just gonna break down this game as well. So like I said before, Mike's defenders do him no favors this tournament. I don't know what, what this guy's thinking. That's just such a dumb foul. There's no reason for it. I don't know why you'd even try to win this ball. Just get your body in between the goal and the player. That's all he had to do. Mike has to eat a PK, gets wrong-sided, and of course he got a red card, so they got to play a man down. Here, Mike actually pulls up, really nice save right here, good reactions. He's here, he has a good set position, gets a good read on the ball, again loaded up on his right foot, and just gets two strong hands of the ball, giving him a corner here, it's a pretty good end result. And I'm not trying to take anything away from the save, because it is a great save, but it is something to take notice of, is that this was the only save of the whole tournament that remotely resembled anything that Mike posts 90% on TikTok, YouTube, whatever. Like even for me, over the winter, I played in four games in the US Open Cup qualification rounds, and I think I left my feet for what you would consider a camera save once out of those four matches. and one went to extra time, so it's almost 400 minutes of play. And the rest of the time is just playing with the ball at your feet, taking crosses, playing high off your line, organizing your defense, and really just trying to play out of the back and handling more routine shots. And that's why I was so critical from the start with Mike's content, where I was trying to steer kids away, young players away from just trying to train these flashy staves, because it is just such a small percentage of what you do. And if that's all you're gonna train, you're gonna get exposed just like Mike here when you're actually put in a real competitive session. Next play, also think Mike does really well on this one right here, where maybe he could cut this ball out here. Uh, probably not. I think it's a good idea to stay and then kind of stalk, but he does well stepping out, making himself big, turns his shoulders a little bit, but it's expected. Makes himself big, got his trailing leg behind him and just forces a kind of tough angled shot right there, but actually pretty good job going for the block. Here, Mike just gets caught cheating again, nowhere as bad as the other one. I mean, these close range ones are kind of tough, but 100% Mike thought he was shooting to his left right here. And he kind of has the right idea where you would hope that number six right here would cover that near post, but he just ends up leaning a little too much because if you're set on this and you got your body weight forward, that's a pretty easy, simple kick save right there. But instead, because he's leaning all the way to the left, can't stick his foot out, gets punished for it. But this is a pretty tough play because if he does hit this back across to that far post, if you're not cheating a little bit or anticipating it's going that way, it's gonna be really tough to be able to get that save if it's a well-placed ball. But it's just part of goalkeeping where if they're gonna place a perfect shot in the corner, then it's whatever. That's not our job to be saving those. It's really these ones that come in around your body and ones that could and should be saved. Those are the ones that you need to keep out of your net. Here, just simple playing out of the back. Again, this is gonna show Mike's inexperience as well. Right there, that's a fine pass right here. But what you need to be doing 
This defender has no options. Mike needs to be tracking that ball back and going along that end line to show for another possible way to play out of this. But you can see here, Mike just plays his ball and then just starts walking slowly and then just stays there. That's, you can't be doing that. You, especially in these small sided games, you need to be that extra player and you're down a man. You need to be showing for the ball as much as possible. So this is just one really lazy play, low IQ play. And right here, just another really, really lazy low IQ play. I mean, this is, this is probably the worst goal he gave up in my opinion, by far. Comes up with a big save. We'll just break this down after. So this is actually a really good angle on what happens. So right here, shot through traffic. This first save, really good save. And then right here, this is to get up just in one of the laziest ways I've ever seen a goalkeeper get up in a competitive match. Two hands on the thigh, just kind of standing up. Ball's still in your box, and it, I, I just can't even understand how you wouldn't be springing back to your feet right here. Stand straight up right here, so just not an athletic stance, not ready for anything. Just stand straight up, and then slow shot to the corner. Like This is really just inexcusable for a goalkeeper. And right here is just another angle. You just see how slow he's standing up, not set at all. That should be a routine save into the corner right there. And inexcusable is really just the best word I can think of for this certain situation. Where I get it, goalkeepers make mistakes. I've made countless mistakes before. I've cost my team points, games kicked out of tournaments by just making dumb mistakes. I can guarantee not a single one was ever because of the lack of effort. Like I actually have trouble believing that this is the effort that Mike put into a situation where he's playing in his first competitive game in probably forever, five years or so. and that's really like the effort you're gonna put into that, especially as someone who likes to talk about how hard they're working all the time, always posting probably every time they're on the field training, just make sure that they're sweating for a quick video to make sure they can tell their followers how hard they're on working on the field, look at this session I just did. And then you're put into an actual game scenario and that's the effort you put forth. It, it really is like honestly just embarrassing. And it's definitely just some food for thought for a lot of you younger players out there. When you see someone constantly talking about how hard they're working and they're always shoving it in your face that I'm at the field today, I'm doing this today, I'm doing this today, those guys, they're probably not working as hard as you think they are and they're trying to put on a front. Because the guys actually putting in the work, they know they can just do that in silence in the dark. They don't need to broadcast everybody about every little thing that they're doing. They know that if they put the work in and they do it right, that when they get put on a field in this situation, they're gonna perform. And then that's where you're actually gonna see the work come through. Then right here, Mike eats a rocket. Good finish, but again, not the best effort from him right here. You can see that's not what you want to be doing. This just looks like he's scared of the ball, which again, in this setting, you are not allowed to be. So right here, as it's hit, you see he's just dropping that knee. At this point, you're, you're sunk. If you're dropping your knee right here, you can't push off. All you have is however far your arms can reach, and you're just not giving yourself a chance for a reaction. That knee, you gotta stay on your feet until you're ready to dive. This one, this is what I was saying earlier, where if a player's gonna tuck it into a lower bottom corner, so be it. It's the game. You're not gonna save everything. This isn't one that you'd expect Mike to save. That's a really good finish. And here again, same idea. This is a tough save. He did get a hand on this. Maybe you could do a little better if it's in your range right there. And this is also 100% on this defender. This is, that's, I don't know what that type of ball was. And then right here, he does get a hand and just can't keep it out. So that's definitely savable. But again, that's a tough one. Here we got ball at Mike's feet. We haven't seen too much of this this game. I have no issues with this. There's no one open, whatever, just float it up. But then Mike makes a really bad mistake off of this, which I'm sure again, just laughing, lack of experience, not playing. Where this gets lobbed over here, there is no excuse for this guy to be this open in this situation. Mike just cleared the ball. As he's dropping back to his line, he's got to be telling this center midfielder right here to drop back. You can't just let a guy be sitting on your end line like that. There's no offsides in this tournament, and then he's just going to punish you for it. So again, that just communication. I'm sure that's also not a strong point of Mike's game just because he doesn't really play. And here's the final standings. I mean, you guys can see Dortmund just got smoked throughout this whole tournament. And like I said, I don't have any video to Dortmund's 8-0 loss to Newtown Pride. And apparently the video just doesn't exist. TST never released it. And while searching for that video, I actually found this interesting article written by a Dortmund supporter who was also a journalist as well. And apparently in his recap of the Newtown Pride Dortmund match that Noah Beck who's another TikToker who I actually have never heard of, 
punched somebody or something and got a red card and the game was just really really ugly game so this is the only match of the whole tournament that tst didn't release so there's no film on it they haven't put anything out on it and i think it's really just because they don't want to make the whole tournament or dortmund look bad just by how that game went so all I really could find out about Mike's performance in this match is that he conceded 8 goals off of 12 shots and personally I hate using save percentage as any indication for how a goalkeeper is performing just because a Golasso and a Howler are equal the same on paper and also world class save and routine save are equal the same but it's pretty safe to say if you're conceding 8 off of 12 shots that you did not ball out that game either. So I'll link this article in the description. It's a pretty interesting read just on Dortmund's performance altogether. Also has a very interesting talking point talking about the problems of social media influencers, which I couldn't agree more with what he's saying there. And I think that pretty much his end of the article is a pretty fitting end to this video. Run the city out in Kansas, slamping in the cut like bandage. I do damage, vandal handle me. These bosses cannot manage me. I am the king of canopy, so rumble in the jungle like a...